Okay, thank you, Tom, uh, and uh, thank you for uh, coming. Um, and uh, I'm very happy. I'm the first time in Zagreb, uh, second time in Zagreb. First time I was like really long years ago, and um, here uh, I decided to present uh, the most recent thing I've done. Uh, actually, uh, I just started to work on this topic. I never wrote on uh, apocalypse and uh, uh, the end of the world. Um, uh, and uh, I, I was mostly writing about animals. Uh, and here it's, it's also not without animals. Uh, they are always uh, like, um, when I do something, uh, there are always uh, some uh, animals lurking around. But uh, um, so I just um, somehow an internal logic of my uh, research on animality and human animality brought me to this um, peculiar uh, topic, uh, which I find uh, pretty important and urgent. You will see why. And um, um, I really apologize that uh, the text was actually published um, a couple of days ago because uh, usually first you present then you publish something but uh, like um, the, 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 the publishers were a little bit too fast so I, I could not um, predict so but uh, but probably uh, um, my um, my only excuse that it was like really a couple of days ago, not not long ago, and uh, also maybe it's a, it's even a good thing if someone like at some occasion read this text, uh, then you probably have already a certain critique or questions or something like this. Uh, but okay, uh, let me start. Um, so the history of. Um, both the history of the present and the psychoanalysis um, teach us that at the beginning there was a, a traumatic event or a series of, tra uh, of traumatic events to which our experience never stop, uh, stops uh, to refer. There is something missing, however, in this post-traumatic approach. Uh, there is some insufficiency here. What do historians say were collective uh, traumas such as wars, uh, the Holocaust, uh, or uh, genocide are uh, concerned. Normally, they express uh, a kind of belief that these traumas can be worked out, that the function <coughs> of memory is uh, to shed light on these events, to make us aware and conscious of them, um, at least in this, um, um, and, uh, um, and thus to prevent their repetition in the future. In its turn, a psychoanalysis, um, at least in its obvious uh, clinical uh, form, addresses an individual traumatic experience, which declares itself through a series of symptoms, as you know, and which can potentially be cured. Uh, this is, of course, um, a simplifi uh, simplification, but I just want to be clear um, that there is something um, this scientific, these two scientific, uh, at least two scientific practices uh, have in common, namely a certain idea of the present which can be cured and of the future which by this remedy, by this cure, uh, can be saved. Uh, in both cases, however, uh, a reference to the traumatic past is necessary. Without this, recovery or redemption uh, is not possible. Um, I propose, instead of trauma, to talk about uh, catastrophe. The difference between the two is that uh, one cannot really recover uh, after a catastrophe, as one normally recovers uh, after a trauma. When you broke your leg, then things will get better. You, you just need some time. Uh, catastrophe is uh, uh, metatraumatic. It happens absolutely. At the beginning there is or there was always already the end. Uh, catastrophe defines the borders of a collective and the true sense of what we call history. 
By catastrophe, I mean, of course, what people do to other people or to nature and what nature or gods do to, uh, to uh, people or animals. Um, wars, uh, genocide, uh, genocide, bomb explosions, hurricanes, uh, earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, but also certain legendary and real events like the expulsion of humans from paradise, the flood, and of course the apocalypse. Above all, I'm thinking about the catastrophe of one's own existence, this apocalypse of the now. Um, the irredeemable nature of a, uh, of a single present moment. Uh, you cannot change anything. The worst is what just happened. Your beloved just died. Your child just died. A giraffe in the zoo just died. God died too. You yourself just died or, uh, or woke up in your bed in the body of an uncanny insect like Kafka's Gregor Zamza. You know what I mean, like this irredeemable uh, moment of the now. You cannot change this, what just happened. Uh, as opposed to what is usually said, catastrophe's time is not in the future, but um, in the present, which we can only grasp as the past, because it flows uh, just as the water of uh, the waters of the flood. Time, time itself is catastrophic. Uh, catastrophe is what already happened, no matter how long ago. It happened in prehistory or it's happening right now, although people are still expecting some, you know, bigger uh, ultimate, um, ultimate catastrophe in the future, as if the previous ones did not really count. I want to make this point as clear as possible. Our collective imagination, overwhelmed by all kinds of pictures and scenarios of a future final collapse, be it another world war, uh, Armageddon, uh, an alien invasion, an epidemic or a pandemic, uh, a zombie virus, a robot, a robot um, uprising, uh, an ecological or natural catastrophe, um, is nothing but projections of this, uh, of this catastrophic time of the past present. We project onto the future what we cannot endure um, as something which already occurred uh, or which is happening now. We still believe that the worst is yet to come. It is a perspective, but not a reality. And therefore, our reality is still not that bad. Uh, a fear of the future and anxiety about some indefinite event, like we will all die, uh, is easier to suffer than a certain irreparable and irreversible horror or that, um, that had just of, of, what, of what has just happened. We are all already dead. There is, however, um, a difference between um, reality, which is still not that bad, and the real. There are two times, the time of the so-called reality and real or catastrophic time. Uh, which flows irreversibly, 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 <laughs> like music. The time of so-called reality gives us a delusion of the present and the future, to which uh, we are dedicated and uh, where we believe there is a salvation. Um, we look to the future and for the future. We have visions of future catastrophes, and these visions prevent us from grasping the catastrophe of the real, of the, uh, or the real catastrophe, which just happens right now. Only uh, Walter Benjamin's angel and uh, Angelus Novus from Clay's painting sees history as one single catastrophe, uh, at which he looks back with horror. You know, you all know this this uh, super um, popular quote, uh, but I will quote it again. Uh, the angel would like to stay, awaken the dead and make whole what uh, has been smashed. But a storm is blowing from, uh, from paradise. It has got caught uh, in his wing wings with such violence that the angel can no longer close them." End of quote. Uh, an early uh, well-known version of uh, the final world uh, worldwide uh, catastrophe is presented in, um, 
chapters 6 8 of uh, genesis um, it, it's uh, my favorite piece of this book uh, you all know the story uh, at a certain moment god uh, regretted uh, of what uh, he had created because uh, people committed too much sin uh, he decided to destroy everything, to erase all flesh from the face of the earth in order to give humanity another chance. Although animals did not co commit any sins, uh, they too had to share this destiny. Along with his family, uh, Noah was obliged by God to take along animals of all species, of every clean animal by sevens and of every unclean animal by couples, male and female. There is a mess with this clean animals. Like um, if you take them, but it's a, um, it's a separate story. It's very interesting. Like um, uh, on the one hand, you take them by couples, but also by, by sevens. So male and female, male and female, male and female, and one one individual goes without a couple, so there is one single individual. The the um, the aim of bringing on board this individual it's a it's a very interesting it's a, it's a story to be continued and uh, um, at some other place. Um, uh, basically, for what is this single um, asexual animal? So, in some paintings dedicated to this story, we see the ark. Noah's family, and an enormous crowd of animals uh, queuing to get in. Uh, perhaps there was panic like in our apocalyptic movies where there is a very limited transport vessel and um, an unlimited number of people trying to board uh, in. It is the only way to be safe, uh, saved from the virus, from the, the, the zombie attack, or just in, like in Noah's case, from, the, from some global natural disaster. Two, four, six, seven. No, sorry. No, I may say. No, I may say to the last in line. We have enough of your kind, of your species. The last of each species enters. Uh, the doors of the ship are um, are closed. The abyss of the sky opens, and cold waters cover the earth. Um, in the recent American film um, version of this story by uh, Darren Aronofsky, the uh, Eponymous Noah's uh, no, Russell Crowe uh, doesn't really get any direct instructions from God. He only uh, gets signs which he decodes in his own way, and here perhaps incorrectly. From the very beginning, when he starts uh, to build the ship, until the end, when he desperately goes on drinking upon arrival, uh, he is constantly doubting his interpretation of God's will. At a certain point, all the preselected um, no, right. At a certain point, all the preselected animals, already in in order uh, by couples, simply come to the ark and occupy their respective places. Uh, of course, uh, God uh, uh, cannot talk directly to this Noah, um, as he did to the other Noah of uh, Genesis. Because uh, this new Noah is uh, supposed to be a man of a free choice, uh, a true American who will sa uh, save the world, the nature. Um, what is interesting about this film is, however, uh, one of uh, Noah's dreamlike visions a water column full of dead and dying, drawing bodies of, uh, of drowning bodies of uh, humans and other animals. That's how a, catastro a catastrophe might really look from inside, from the point of view of the one who is there in the water. Um, here is a girl, hands up. Here is a small elephant, a snake, a mess of beasts of all sizes, uh, all slightly losing their power of resistance and going to the bottom together with plants, fragments of uh, things and debris. Um, most often we tend to uh, identify ourselves um, with those who will be saved. We think of ourselves as one of those chosen uh, seven of our species who were taken on board. 
uh, one of those who managed to go through the holy police cordon behind which the damned, the, sin, uh, the damned, the sinners, the infected, the losers, and all of others were left. In our reality time imagination, we all belong to Noah's family. We look at the disaster from outside, from the ark, so that only the water's, um, uh, the water's uh, surf surface can be seen, uh, and not what is going on um, in, in its depth, um, in, the real, in the real time of uh, catastrophe. Uh, it still did, did not happen to us, it happened to someone else, and uh, for those in the water it's really happening. That's why I say uh, that they are living through, or rather dying through, a, a real or catastrophic time. In reality time, in turn, in reality time, um, the waters are still coming closer and closer, the catastrophe can and will happen, and we need to be prepared for it. At least that's what a popular Christian culture teaches us, constantly bringing us uh, new and new material for uh, daydreaming uh, about our disastrous uh, future, in which, if we are um, good enough, uh, we will be finally saved together with our families and pets. Uh, some people are still trying to search um, for signs of a forthcoming uh, apocalypse in the book of Revelation, the final book of the New Testament, uh, as if ignoring the fact uh, that uh, someone named John, uh, the author of this book, dating approximately from the first century, uh, b from the first um, century, pro proclaimed that the time is at hand, all this will happen shortly. Uh, although all the relevant data are encoded according to an opaque biblical uh, numerology, most researchers who address this question seem to agree that the number of the beast of the apocalypse, a numerical version of the Antichrist, uh, points to the name of uh, Nero, the emperor of Rome, who, together with Domitian, was known as a very cruel dictator, massacring and uh, persecuting, uh, persecuting early uh, representatives of early Christian communities. Uh, as Engels indicates in his short essay, uh, essay um, dedicated to the book of Revelation, Engels wrote it in 1983, uh, with the reference to Ernst Renan, these communities, these Christian communities at that era, I quote, were rather like local sections of the International Worker Men's, Working Men's Association. Uh, end of quote. The author of the book, the, someone John, was himself uh, most likely one of the victims of this mass repression. Uh, and the, he wrote this book on Patmos Island, to which he was exiled um, by the Romans for believing uh, in uh, I quote, the world of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. The very word uh, apocalyp uh, apocalypsis from the Koine Greek means unveiling or revelation. It unveils and reveals uh, the truth about a certain reality. As far as it unveils, that is, unveils what, what is, Etymologically, the apocalypse is always now. Uh, I quote Engels again, how Christianity looked at 68 year, we can here see as in the mirror, end of quote. So um, Engels in this, in this quote, he perfectly grasped a mirroring relationship between the reality and the real, uh, revealed through this peculiar numerology of the, the beasts, and you, you remember like there are like four horses and the, there is one beast with the seven, uh, seven heads or something like this. The other beast that are more, uh, looking more like a, like a lamb. Um, uh, like there is a very interesting bestiary and uh, everything is at the same time in the kind of numbers. It's a crazy, crazy book. 
I really suggest you to read it because it, um, yeah, it's just cool. So, um, in this sense, uh, but in this sense, uh, the book of Revelation is the book of he, uh, of he, on, on history, which depicts the religious uh, and class struggle of the time and addresses uh, Christians uh, with the call for solidarity, basically. Not that uh, John does not address, uh, address just anyone. Uh, his book contains messages for the seven churches um, of Asia. Uh, and they were the existing, the really existing, existing Christian communities uh, of his days. Like very weak, very um, uh, always under this pressure. Uh, of this, this Roman Empire and so on and so forth. The, apocal uh, the apocalypse is now, don't give up. That's how one would now translate John's message. Uh, if we believe that John's apocalypse was already at hand, doesn't this mean that for now the, uh, the catastrophe he revealed has already happened? Uh, the world is over. And we are now all living, all living in in the post um, uh, in the post apocalypse. And if the world is over, how is it possible then not to give up? Uh, Alexander Meng, uh, a Russian Orthodox priest, the, uh, theologian, and biblical scholar, who was murdered in uh, 1990 by an ex-wielding assailant, uh, replies to this question in his lecture dedicated to the book of Revelation. Uh, he wrote it one year before he was killed uh, in uh, 1989. I quote, the end of the world is a permanent reality. It constantly repeats, end of quote. Uh, Main interprets uh, it in a very Christian way. There is a catastrophe and there is a salvation. All turning points in history are apocalyptic. The struggle between God uh, between sorry, good and evil repeats again and again, and the good may even win each time a believer opens the door of his heart uh, to Jesus who knocks there. Right? But um, isn't it true that if there is no God, uh, a catastrophe should happen alone without the necessary, uh, the necessary supplement of salvation? Uh, in this case, uh, one can still say that um, the end of the world is a permanent reality. Uh, this will just mean that the time of the real sometimes simply catches reality time by its tail or uh, somehow uh, breaks its screen, uh, behind which there is neither future nor even a present. The catastrophe of the real makes the reality of the catastrophe permanent. That's how one would explain, although there are um, various possible explanations. Since the story is true, uh, its interpretation is uh, infinite. So uh, explain the fact that um, the event of the ap apocalypse uh, constantly repeats. Um, one of the uh, relatively uh, secular, modern versions of the apocalypse is the idea of the end of history, presented by Alexander Kozhev, based um, on his misreading of Hegel. While for Hegel the movement of, of spirit is both historical and eternal, and the end can be understood um, uh, um, in terms of the goal of history, rather, which coincides with the dialectical development of reason, and knowledge, and so forth, Kozhev um, simply declares that the history is over, that no nothing really new can ever happen on Earth. It seems that there is nothing, nothing catastrophic um, about this version, except for its assertion that there is no more future. This is something new. Uh, to make a long story sh uh, short, the beginning of time, according to Kozhev, uh, coincides with the appearance of man. Before this moment, there is no time. Uh, there is only natural being or space and, uh, and animals 
that inhabit this space. History starts when, uh, at a certain point, one of those animals turns into a man. Um, the appearance of man as an active, suffering, fighting um, and working uh, nothingness will introduce history and time, and in the process will negate the naturally given multitude of beings for the benefit of, its, um, of his man's um, supernatural ideal goals. A uh, human being um, opens history, uh, which will be the history of struggles, wars, revolutions, through which people will actively change the world. The point is that, uh, the end of uh, the Kozhevian point is that the end of history should coincide with its beginning, and at the end of history, human beings should turn back into animals again. Um, Kozhevian history goes uh, around only once, with no repetition, and this is the history of becoming human, which is already over. Uh, to finalize history, man has to create a universal, homogeneous state of mutual recognition, a state of the total satisfaction of all desires. At the end of history, uh, man does not need to change the world anymore, to work and to fight uh, any longer. Uh, satisfaction of his desire is um, possible here and now. Uh, following Kozhev's logic, this uh, point was theoretically already achieved after the Battle of Vienna, since even Hegel, as he says, saw Napoleon as a world spirit riding on horseback. Don't miss this important detail. Um, the horseback is, um, is important. Um, this is a quote uh, uh, from Kozhev. In and by this battle, the vanguard of humanity virtually attained the limit and the aim, that is the end of man's historical evolution. What has happened since then was but an extension of space of the universal revolutionary force actualized in France by Robespierre Napoleon. From the authentically historical point of view, the two world wars with the retinue of large and small revolutions had only the effect of bringing the backward civilizations of the peripheral provinces into line with the most advanced real or virtual European historical positions." End of quote. Um, I must note that even uh, before Kozhev, apocalyptic expectations of Napoleon were prominent, um, especially in Russian literature, and particularly in Leo Tolstoy's uh, War and Peace, and uh, Gogol's um, Dead Souls. Thus, one of uh, Tolstoy's characters, Pierre Bezukhov, um, is obsessed with the idea that Napoleon is the true, uh, is the true Antichrist, uh, whose name, uh, when written in French and deciphered according to an ancient numerical plate, is the same 666 as the, the beast of the apocalypse. Uh, the main character of uh, Gogol's novel, uh, Chichikov, uh, travels across rural, uh, rural uh, Russia and literally collects, uh, collects dead souls. Uh, people spread uh, various uh, rumors about him. Uh, and uh, I quote Gogol. Among them, a theory uh, that Chichikov was Napoleon escaped from St. Helena and uh, traveling about the world in disguise. And if it is, should be supposed that no such notion could possibly have been broached, let the reader remember that these events took place not many years after the French had been driven out of Russia, and that various prophets had since declared that Napoleon was Antichrist and would one day escape from his island prison to exercise universal sway on earth. Nay, some good folk had even declared the letters of Napoleon's name to constitute the apocalyptic chiffre. End of quote. Nice. Um, so, from Hegel's phenomenology of spirit, uh, which was finished in 18, 1807, 
to Gogol's Dead Souls, published in 1842, the emperor or horseman of the apocalypse uh, took a long journey through Europe to Russia and back in order to end up after one century celebrated in the secular apocalypse uh, by Kozhev. The Battle of Jena was a kind of Kozhevian Armageddon where European historical positions, what he call European, uh, calls European historical positions, finally won with the universal uh, state now uh, on the way. There was nothing left for it, uh, for it um, to do but to fit a certain uh, social reality, uh, find a good enough state that could serve as a model for a further um, post-historical unfolding of the same. Uh, of course, uh, such a state was soon indicated. First in Kozhev's own rather ironic note about the American way of life um, with its expanding consumption as a perfect example of um, a human being turning uh, back into an animal. Uh, although Kozhev himself, in fact, uh, proposed uh, several other ex uh, examples of this, including Russia and Japan. But um, Kozhev was very uh, ironical. You can never really uh, mm, differentiate where is it like how serious he is when he is talking about the, the Jap Japanization of the entire world, uh, in, of, of all Westerns, including Russian, and so on and so forth, uh, or Americans as a proper um, happy animals. Uh, but then followed the more like boring and popular and official version by Francis Fukuyama, who literally and positively identified the end of history with the American liberal democracy and uh, contemporary capitalism. A very clear and simple objection uh, to this can be raised from the point of view of communist uh, eschatology. Um, the history of all, of all Hitherte existing society is the history of class struggles, write Marx and Engels in the Communist Manifesto. As long as the struggle, uh, struggle continues, history goes on. While for a capitalist ideologist like Fukuyama, the final battle, battle has already been won, and thus the winner makes history its property, which is now commodified, carefully stored, or just thrown off, but never freely distributed. Then for a communist, um, Armageddon is still to come, unless it's going on right now. A communist cannot really let the enemy save history or keep history. Just like the early Christians, a uh, communist doesn't want to give up. For this reason, he needs to believe that the history continues. Um, this makes sense. Imagine if someone stole all, uh, all the drinkable water on earth. Uh, a thirsty crowd is knocking on the thief's door and asking for water. The water is gone, he says to them. Uh, he says to them, but they know that the water is not gone. It was just that it was just stolen. Uh, capitalism is like this: it steals water. But imagine if there is n if there is really no more water, if the enemy really won and has already devastated and dehydrated the land. This is a catastrophe, somehow opposite to the flood, the thirst. Um, there are, however, some versions of the end of history, which I must say uh, come uh, quite close to the Kozhevian version, although they uh, explicitly belong to the other field, to the field of uh, like uh, anti-capitalist thought. Uh, thus, so. You, you see what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to, uh, to map a different kind of uh, apocalypse, like um, uh, different versions, like capitalist version, Christian version, uh, left-wing, um, uh, like Marxist version, whatever. Um, thus, the theory of the multitude 
proposed by Tony Negri and Michael Hart, implies that we are now living in a world of global empire. Again. Uh, in this world, the traditional industrial proletariat does not exist anymore. It has already disappeared. And instead of class struggle, a creative multitude of singularities develops out of, if, of its own uh, life an imminent resistance uh, to capitalism. Thus, we have the totality of uh, global uh, capital and its uh, imminent uh, resistance. Traditional national states uh, are dying too, giving way to transnational capital, which does not know borders, as you know, all know this version. If we try to apply this uh, thesis to our reality and read the, them through our reality time, they immediately lose any sense. Although a lot of Western people um, take them uh, literally and truly believe uh, that um, immaterial labor, you know, uh, now uh, has replaced this material labor and um, the global has uh, replaced uh, the national. So that, 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 uh, some people truly believe that the labor now is all this creative, like precarious, which rather to be identified with the, the work of artists. Uh, everyone is an artist in, in Berlin or mm -hmm. in uh, Paris, but kind of not in, in China. Uh, uh, of course, uh, material workers uh, are still here. They still create or uh, all what we have in our daily lives, all those dresses, cars, Coca-Colas, uh, and so on. Um, this world of, uh, world of commodities we live in is a result of the highly exploited and totally non-creative material labor of the people in the third world, uh, of migrants or of the poor. Uh, the, uh, though they are not uh, socially represented, material laborers are here and their existence must, must not be ignored. The nation st uh, state is still here too. Capitalism and the nation st uh, state still go hand in hand and the imperialist tendencies of capital only increase the role of um, the role of the nation, st uh, nation state when it's needed. Look at Russia and Ukraine, look at Syria, look at uh, Israel and um, and uh, at these new debates about migration policy in Europe and the new discussions of uh, identity, um, integration, sovereignty and so forth. Um, and um, the multitude and uh, the capital and the multitude are not just two uh, entities existing in front of each other, um, but the undead nation state uh, stands in between them and when needed prevents this multitude from acquiring a class consciousness. That's how, for example, political protests in no, non-Western countries where the working class never uh, cease to exist, easily transform into national ethnic conflicts. You know what I mean? Instead of like uh, what I call the, the class conscious uh, consciousness, uh, instead of realize that we are all here workers or poor or something like this, ninety nine percent, the the true working uh, working class in in uh, the third world countries, uh, like get the, the, this idea that we are. Um, like Ukrainians or we are Russians or we, we are something, uh, you know, the, the, the nation, the, the certain national unity. And that's how like the, the political protest transforms into ethnic conflict. That's what I mean, the very stupid uh, remark. In short, in short, uh, this kind of leftist um, versions of the end of history seem, seem to be refuted by history itself, which goes on and on, apparently. To this reasonable uh, objection to the postmodern uh, anti-capitalism, um, um, to the postmodern anti-capitalist form of the end of the world, however, one could reply that these ideas can actually make sense, but from a different, uh, like from apocalyptic perspective. Um, 
They can be read as a new apocalypse for the left. Another evil empire uh, wins and another community doesn't give up. And again, like any apocalypse, um, this one gives way to uh, a kind of futurist and messianic visions of a forthcoming catastrophe, followed by salvation. Thus, uh, contemporary, um, contemporary accelerationists seem to seriously care about the future. It should be snatched, uh, snatched uh, from the enemy's claws. The future should be pushed forward to the very brink of capitalist catastrophe. Capitalism will destroy itself and the world around it sooner or later. But the task of accelerationist, um, accelerationism is to outrun its catastrophic sprint, to pass ahead. Uh, in a way, uh, the accelerationist manifesto sounds like a plot of an old Soviet um, uh, science fiction uh, story, where scientists from the, the communist, um, from a faraway communist future, um, uh, go back uh, to the past with a time machine to prevent a catastrophe in the past. But um, but uh, the question would be, isn't uh, uh, capitalism itself a catastrophe? Does it not kill uh, workers, people? Isn't finally the number of the capitalist beast inscribed into the barcode of every commodity as some crazy Christians never st stop to, to warn? Um, finally, uh, um, finally, I will mention yet uh, another thinker who raised an objection to both uh, the capitalist and the communist end of history. In his uh, letter to X lecturer on Hegel written in 1937, Georges Bataille famously says, I quote, uh, super famous quote, sorry for, uh, yeah, but um, it's um, important, it makes sense in this particular context. Um, I quote, if action doing is, as Hegel says, negativity, the question arises as to whether the negativity of one who has nothing more to do disappears or remains in a state of unemployed negativity. Personally, I can only decide in one way, being myself precisely this unemployed negativity. I would not be able to define myself more precisely. I don't mind Hegel's having foreseen this possibility. At least he didn't situate it at the conclusion of the process he described. I imagine that my life, or better yet, it's aborting the open wound that is my life, constitutes all by itself the refutation of Hegel's closed system." End of quote. So this uh, battalion uh, sentence looks like a very personal uh, objection, even like a hysterical, uh, spectacular one. What about me? But I continued uh, to develop, um, like, uh, if the history is over, if there is no uh, need in negativity uh, anymore, uh, so what about, what about myself? I'm still here. Uh, so uh, he continued to develop this argument, particularly in his uh, accursed share, where he links it to the, uh, to his own version of uh, political economy. Quite simply, the end of history would mean the end of social inequalities, which is the final goal of uh, communism. And as far as these inequalities continue to exist, history cannot be ended. But even communism cannot really, according to Bataille, effectively achieve its goal. It wants to eliminate differences for the sake of a universal uh, humanity. But uh, humanity itself is something which is distributed uh, uh, actually extremely uh, unequally um, between the humans. Uh, between, between the humans, the non-humans, and the more or less humans. Humanity itself uh, is distributed unequally. As far as we negate ourselves as animals, history doesn't have an end. 
at least a happy end. Uh, it can just, it cannot end uh, according to Bataille, but it can collapse. Um, and uh, unlike Kozhev, Bataille insists that we cannot transform into animals again. Becoming human is irreversible. An open wound, which he uh, mentions here, that is my life, um, is basically produced by human separation from animality, and this is what it means to be a human being. Um, this appears to be a true deadlock for which so, like, if communism cares about this universal humanity, then there are, uh, like, it's, um, it's a kind of um, um, absolute limit is what is not human. And uh, some humans will always um, be pushed towards this limit. Um, that's, what, that's what he means, basically. This appears to be a true deadlock, for which only a yet bigger deadlock can provide a kind of solution, on my point of view. What really eliminates differences is a catastrophe. In the waters of the flood, everyone is equal. I'm arguing not for a messianic, but a catastrophic communism. Uh, that is the end of the world taken in its real time. In this time, the end of the end of history doesn't mean that we still have a future and that it will get better or worse. It's already worse. Uh, worse. Uh, it's, it's already worse. Um, all of these phenomena that are uh, associated with the reality and that are supposed to reemerge after the new beginning of history, you know, you know, wars, repression, butchery, and so forth, uh, like all this uh, Russian and Ukraine story, again, uh, as the most recent, uh, are really visions of, of not of the new beginning of, of history or something like this, but rather of our present zombie apocalypse. Uh, the end of the end, as the real end, would mean an encounter between the reality time and the time of the real, uh, the time of, of catastrophe. It, was, it would force us to, to accept the fact of our real time apocalypse and to make it over as the only true revolutionary situation, a situation where there is no hope but only despair. In this situation, we cannot keep uh, waiting for a future catastrophe with a happy end, a messianic moment, uh, a messianic moment of hope, of believing in the future, and um, in the idea that we are still uh, full of life, uh, actually put us to, uh, puts us to sleep, lost in dreams. Uh, mm -hmm. Only when already dead uh, and facing no future do we really have nothing to lose. This is, um, this is uh, basically it. So I finished. Uh, and you see it's a, kind of, uh, like a, it's a kind of draft of a certain future work. That's why uh, it's important for me to, to deliver this small thing, just to get you know, uh, your critique and then to continue working on this topic. So this, for, for a moment, it's just this modest like um, kind of mapping, attempt, uh, attempt of mapping uh, different directions where to go. Uh, and uh, I will be happy to hear uh, um, your questions, comments, or, or like critique, whatever. <laughs>